Hey everybody, Steve here in Cathedral City, California. I'm here at Honda of the Desert Honda dealer. I just uh, dropped off my car, just brought it in to the service department for uh, oil change and tire rotation. But I thought instead of sitting here in the lobby waiting, it's probably going to be an hour and a half, two hours or so, I think I'm going to walk around the neighborhood. There's uh, a neighborhood right across the street here. It's a mobile home community. I don't know if it's gated or not. If it's gated, I guess I won't be able to go in, but if it's not, I think I'll walk around and see what I can see. We have quite a few of these. I don't know if this one is a 55 plus community. We have a lot of 55 plus manufactured and mobile home communities. Let's go over and check. It's a beautiful day. This is, it's the last week of January 2024. It's supposed to be 80 degrees today and it's already about 70 degrees. And I think it's like 930. So it's a really beautiful day for a walk. So I'm going to do that instead of sitting in the lobby here for the next hour and a half. I always bring lots of hats when I'm out uh, driving around and exploring. Especially these uh, big hats here to block the sun, keep it off my ears, especially in my nose. I always get a bad sunburn on my nose if I don't wear my hat and my, my sunblock. So here's a little bit of gay Palm Springs history for you. It's a little noisy on this street corner, but hopefully you can hear me. This corner right here, Palm East Palm Canyon Drive and Perez Road, right across the street, this Subaru dealership. This used to be, it was either the very first gay bar here in the Palm Springs Desert area or one of the very first. I'm pretty sure it was the first, but not positive on that. So maybe some of you will know and you can share that with us. It was called Queen's Attic and opened in 1969, the same year the Stonewall Riot took place back in New York City, Greenwich Village in New York, 1969. The rebellion that started the uh, gay liberation movement here in the U.S. And, and actually around the world. And that same year, Queen's Addict opened right here. Now, I never went to that bar. Never knew it, never saw it. But I did go to my very first gay bar here in Palm Springs. Well, it wasn't my first gay bar, but it was the first gay bar that I went to in the Palm Springs area. Also here in Cathedral City. And it was down about a mile or so that direction. And I'll visit that maybe on another, another walk. It's right across the street from City Hall. It was called Oil Can Harry's. How many of you remember Oil Can Harry's? They also had a location up on Ventura Boulevard. And I believe it was Studio City in the San Fernando Valley of Los Angeles area. Used to go there all the time when I lived in West Hollywood. It was kind of a hangout. People either went to Studio One or Circus Disco in Hollywood, or you would go over the hill, take Laurel Canyon over the hill to Oil Can Harry's. So I'm sure some of you watching this will remember those bars, those bars and discos from back in the day. But I'm really curious to know if any of you have heard of this one or if any of you have ever been to, had ever been to this one. That was, what, almost 55 years ago, Wait. right? And it's right across the street from the mobile home park that I'm hoping to walk around in this morning if it's open to the public. And I'm going to find out in just a minute because it's just a, a block away. It's kind of sad how so much of history gets erased. I remember, God, I'm so old that I remember when 7-Elevens were brand new, when the first 7-Elevens first opened up in the L.A. area. I was probably 10, 11 years old, I think. This is back in the 1960s. Okay, I'm happy to see it's not a gated community. It's called Tramview. I don't know if it's Tramview Mobile Home Park. Now, the thing that's so interesting about this park is that all of the street names are named after presidents. So this first street, the entry street is Washington, after George Washington, named after George Washington. Someone must have been a history buff or loved presidents. Fountain's nice. Okay, well, let's just go up and down the, the streets here. Now, the other president that I see right away is, is President Buchanan, who many say was our first gay president. Have any of you heard that? 
Let's walk down this way. It's always nice to see rainbow flags here in the different communities of Palm Springs or the Palm Springs area. This is Cathedral City. Palm Springs is right next door, about just two, three blocks west of here. Love seeing the rainbow flags. These are cute, aren't they? Okay, here's Ike's Place, Eisenhower Drive. Now, I think I was here years ago because I'd heard about this house here, which is kind of an interesting house. This was supposed to be, if I remember correctly, a home that was used by Eisenhower or maybe some of the troops. I'll, I'll have to look that up and see. I'll, I'll let you know if it is something worth mentioning. Yeah, in fact, look, I think, I think these were like bunkers or something, if I remember right. I don't think they were pink back in the day, but... Yeah, the rest of these are mobile and manufactured homes, but these are brick homes that were used during World War II when Eisenhower was here in the desert. Okay, this is called Lincoln. Interesting. All right, so this is the back entrance here. That's the Honda dealership right there. All right, I definitely have to check this out and see what the story is on these homes here. I know there was some kind of a story. Okay, Lincoln Street and Eisenhower. Eisenhower did own a home here in Indian Wells back in the 60s, 1960s. And he used to golf here in the city of Palm Springs, golfed all over the desert. He was a big fixture here back in the day. And in fact, you know, the Eisenhower Medical Center is named after him. And the airport, as you can probably guess, is not too far away. <laughs> So a pretty nice place to go plane watching here. All right, let's walk down this street here. Not a breeze today, it's so beautiful. Okay, I didn't know they had RVs here too. So I guess this is a mobile home park and an RV park. This is winter, so we do have a lot of planes coming in. Flying in and out of Palm Springs. Even though they're pretty close, it's pretty quiet. I guess landing is much quieter than taking off. So Buchanan would have to be my favorite president. He's one of the most forgotten presidents and may or may not have been gay. From everything I've read, it sure seems like he was probably gay. He was a confirmed bachelor, the only bachelor president that we've ever had. And he lived with vice president, oh gosh, I can't remember his name now, who was also a confirmed bachelor. And I think he became vice president or maybe they were gonna run together as president and vice president. I can't remember the story right now. I, but. Uh, I visited both of their grave sites, and I'll share those, I think, maybe on this channel for President's Day. Herbert Hoover. Okay, not too much interesting looking on that street. So let me just go down. I know this goes back quite a ways. I drove through here once, years ago, or maybe a couple of times. Calvin Coolidge. Oh, this looks kind of cute. Now this is a really cute vintage mobile home, isn't it? Look at this. I love seeing places like this. Now my brother Robert was asking me the other day, how come there aren't many pink flamingos down here in front yards? And I was, Kind of, I'm kind of surprised too. 
I hadn't thought about it till he mentioned it, and I was like, yeah, where are all the pink flamingos? Used to be a lot of them back, back in the day, but not too many. I think if we're going to see any pink flamingos, though, today this would definitely be a place to see, <laughs> to see some. Another plane. You can see they're coming in quite, quite often, like every five minutes or so. Well, I don't even think it's been five minutes. Another RV. I'm going to, have to tell Marsha about this place. I wonder if she knows they have RVs here. Or RV spots. Warren G. Harding, Taft, and Wilson across the street. Hello. <laughs> okay, no pink flamingos yet. I wonder what this is. Is this the laundry area or maybe trash area? Yeah, it does look like there's restrooms and things. So maybe it's just showers and restrooms. I think the pool is right here on the right. And like a, in the clubhouse, I guess, would be here on the right. This is a Monday morning, so not a lot of people out and about at the pool. No pets allowed. It's pretty cool. Beautiful views. Yeah, definitely a good place to watch planes land. I guess these are solar panels here. Probably to keep the pool warm. A spa. Okay, we got William Howard Taft. Look at these pretty views here. How quiet and peaceful it is here. No pink flamingos yet, though. Okay, so it continues down here is McKinley, William McKinley. This would be a great neighborhood if you were a history buff, wouldn't it? It's pretty. Oh, this bottle tree, this is cute. Very creative. And there's a few empty lots in here. Harrison. So this is a golf course country club community next door on this side. It's Harrison. So there are some newer homes here as well as the uh, the vintage homes. This looks pretty new. Very nice. Hey, I see a pink flamingo. <laughs> All right, Robert, this is for you. Now this one is a little bit... Uh, okay, here are some traditional pink flamingos in the wild. Isn't this cute? This one's kind of hiding. I had a feeling this would be the right place to spot some pink flamingos. Yeah, so this street has more newer manufactured homes. Well, and there's a vintage, vintage mobile home. This is a cute vintage one. 
Ah, another flag. This one looks like it's time for a new one. It's getting faded from the sun. Now someone just stopped by and she was telling me, I think she said this one might be for sale. The park, I guess, sells some of these themselves. Arthur in Washington. She was telling me the space rent is going up to, I think she said $800 a month, which, you know, it's pretty reasonable. Most, especially if you, if the home is paid for, if it's some of these, you, you know, back in the day, you could probably buy some of these for 25000 you know, $50,000. Pay cash, you own your house, and then you're just paying a space rent of $800 a month. Which is a lot cheaper than rent, especially some of these, I'm sure, are like two bedrooms. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> that one's a really cute one. Hi there. Okay, I like this. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately that's a problem every community has. Nice one. This is definitely a great community if you love watching planes. This is a cute one. Nice patio here. Okay, this was Garfield. Okay, we've got Hayes. Rutherford B. Hayes. Okay, here's another cute sign. And it wouldn't be a mobile home park without some golf cars. Everyone's favorite way to get around here in the desert. Oh, that's a cute sign too. Okay, definitely have a sense of humor here. Trailer Trash Turnpike. <laughs> That's very cute. A woman was on her way out and she stopped by and we were talking and she said she loves it here. She's lived here since 1999 and loves it. That one I could actually read, Alaska Airlines. <laughs> But listen to how quiet it is. It's amazing. Oh, have I reached the end? At least the end of this street. I don't know if there are others behind or if that's another community. All right, I'll have to go back, turn around. Oh, what's this? Is that like a little birdhouse or something? So that's another mobile home community on the other side of these bushes here. And this is a bike path. I've seen bikes go by. I don't know where they're going, but... Every time they go by, I don't have my camera out. So I've missed filming them. I don't know if the RV parking spaces here are also 800 a month. If so, then that would be uh, almost double what Marsha is paying in. Desert Hot Springs, I think they're paying, I think she said 450 a month, and this is 800 a month. So this is, you know, much more in the city, but right here, just walking distance to Target and all kinds of restaurants and stores and things where Desert Hot Springs is, is pretty far away. It's about 10, 15 minutes from, morning, from the city. So I guess that makes sense that it would be more expensive here. Plane. I'm easily amused. I was reading in the uh, Desert Sun newspaper online this morning that 
the city is the airport has broken all records as far as number of flights in and out of the Palm Springs airport and they're doing a they're going to be doing a major expansion I think this year of the airport and that's kind of sad I hate to see it get big I mean it's it's nice that it's a small airport still I mean it's an international airport but it's still pretty small easy to park easy to get in and out of and you know the, the larger it gets the more expensive parking is and more difficult it is to get in and out but we are very popular here so it's not a big surprise that we just keep growing now this one's a real surprise look how pretty this is very modern looking so they've added on to these barracks or whatever these are here on Ike's Place. Very eclectic in here. I was expecting this to be a much longer walk, but I just looked at my walking app. Oh, look at that, that's neat. A little dangerous if you're walking down there and trip and fall, but looks nice. And I've only walked about a mile and a half so far. So I may just keep walking. I got a message from the Honda dealer. They, of course, like they always do, they want to, every, every time you take your car in, they, for one thing, they want to upsell you for lots of other things. Now, it hasn't really been serviced in, gosh, probably two to three years, a major service. So it probably does need it. So this is Jim's uh, Del Taco. This is the Del Taco he comes to. It's a little far away from where we live, but it's the south end of Palm Springs. The shopping center here, which is the Target Shopping Center. And I'm going to stop in real fast and pick up a few items at Trader Joe's. So it's a great location. Just picked up the car. They, they were pretty fast. It only took, gosh, a little more than an hour. And this is a Monday. I made an appointment, so that was good. That probably helped a bit. This is the Honda dealer where Jim got his car and where he takes it in to be serviced. All right, let's see. I think I'll just park right here. So I'm going to pop in here real fast into Trader Joe's. I just have a couple of items that I need to get, and since it's so close, I'm going to stop in here instead of going over to Walmart, which Walmart's not too far away either, but I just picked up the car. So happy that I was in and out so fast. I was really expecting to be here for a few hours. They sent me a couple of videos while they were working on the car, which is really pretty cool. They, they texted them to me, recommending that I get new tires, but I'm going to wait a little bit. I drive so little anymore, and... My car is only three years old. I think my last car, my Ford Escape, I don't remember changing, getting new tires maybe once the whole 15 years that I owned it. Maybe I owned it longer than 15 years, maybe 20 years. Maybe I got new tires maybe once or twice, but three years, thats that seems pretty fast to get to have to get new new tires. So I don't know, maybe this car, maybe they, when I bought this car, they had really, really bad tires or something, but still looks like there's quite a bit of tread on the tires. So I don't know. For right now, I'm going to hold off. And I think maybe my next service, I do need, probably will need a new filter and some other things. So I'll do that next time. And I don't know if you can tell, but my eyes are a lot better. Two weeks ago, I went to my ophthalmologist and my eyes were just, both of them were just itching and burning. And I thought I was going to have to go to the emergency room or something. It was so bad. I was having some kind of an allergic reaction to the eye drops. Just didn't know which eye drops. And it turns out after testing a few different things and removing one at a time, turns out that at least it seems as if it's the Zydra, which is for dry eye, which was giving me major dry eye and red eyes. So it was doing the exact opposite of what it was supposed to do. So I'll be talking to the doctor today. And he said, when I was there, I said, I did want to go ahead and do the, the cataract surgery on this eye. And he said, well, we can't do it because your eyes are so red. We got to, we have to wait until, you know, the redness goes away. And I said, well, you know, while I was taking those drops, the redness never went away. But I think you can tell, I mean, there's always red around my eyes, but they're not itchy today. They they don't seem especially red. I mean, there's a little bit of pinkness, but not too much red. So 
hopefully if they stay like this, I'm going to talk to him. I have an appointment, a phone appointment. Um, hopefully I can go in maybe in the next couple of days and set an appointment to have my cataracts done. Thank you all for all of the feedback that you gave me about cataract surgery. I would say 99% of you were thrilled with the cataract surgery you had or someone that you know had. So that makes, that's, so that's very encouraging to hear. And according to the doctor and according to all of you, sometimes it can be worse to wait until, you know, your cataract gets worse to, to actually do it. So I'm going to do it now before it gets too bad. I mean, it's, it's not great. I mean, this eye is very, very blurry, but it could definitely be a lot worse. I can still see out of it. It's just, just blurry. So anyway, I'll let you know how that goes. And, and if I get, if I'm able to schedule a cataract uh, surgery appointment uh, this week, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. So thanks again for all the feedback. I appreciate it. Wow, that was pretty surprising. It's 11 o'clock on a Monday morning and Trader Joe's is just packed. Is this like the most popular day of the week to shop or something? I would have thought it would be the least popular day of the week to shop, but every aisle was just jam-packed full of people. I was like so, so surprised. It was like shopping at Walmart in the middle of the day. But you know, I guess we do have a lot of retirees here who have nothing to do all day except go shopping. And Trader Joe's is very, very popular, so I guess maybe it shouldn't be a surprise, but still pretty surprising. So I got my lettuce, and I'm going to head home now. So thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you all next time.